But yeah, dude, uh, uh, you know, fifteen to twenty dollar firefish is just so freaking beautiful. So much color, and they're out, and they don't mess with anything, and they're super hardy. And I wouldn't say that they're totally underrated, but they should be celebrated, like just so much more. And then right along with them, um, all the other dartfish, right? You know, scissor tail goby and a zebra goby. Oh my lord! The, again. Just like everything else, when they're small and just, you know, a little juvenile, they look cool. But when they get large and really settled in, they just glow. Yeah. Absolutely glow. I'll throw another one your way. It's not actually a – I wouldn't call it a cheap fish. Uh, I, I guess cheap relative to its more more well-known counterpart, but the Swalacey Basslet. Bro, I have it down here. I have it on my <laughs> list. I literally, I'm sure it's blown out, but, like – Listen, I have a candy basslet, yeah. and I have a Swiss guard, and I've had Swalazies before. Uh, this is something I'm going to say about freaking every fish. It's muted at the fish store, and then mm-hmm. you get it home, and you get it conditioned. The, the, all the orange just starts glowing. It yeah. really comes out. So why do you have Swalazi down? That's so funny. I didn't write down that many fish, but my Swalazi is right, literally on here. Well, I mean, I, I, the, um, you know, the, the candy basslet is out of my price range right Mm -hmm. um so uh it's not like i bought the swalacea as a poor man's so the first one i ever got um was i believe it was magna in atlanta and uh kevin cohen live aquaria was there and uh they didn't want to bring all their fish that they had on this display back to magna Mm-hmm. So me being a local resident, he was like, hey, do you want a couple of these fish? And he was really generous, and he gave me a Swalesi basslet and a yellow Tonga. Um, why am I drawing a blank right now? Um, Blenny? Blenny, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like you said, the Swalesi was all right looking, but once he got settled in my tank, the orange on that thing was crazy. And then, again, I I get a kick out of having cryptic fish that – Maybe you don't see them every day, you know, but when you're chilling in front of your reef with a beer and that one time a week the dude pops out and looks at you and goes back in his hole, you're like, oh, hey, you know, <laughs> that, that, that's fun, right? The guy, the fish that are in your face begging for food all the time, nothing wrong with that, but it's cool to have some little surprises coming out of your rock work. Uh, mandarins are a lot like that too, where sometimes, at least in my experience, like mandarins will... I won't see them every day, but they're around, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But um, you must have a lot of rock. Uh, I wouldn't say so. Uh, I mean, I, I definitely don't have the rock wall ever. But mm. yeah, it's just that was a cool fish where you not only was it cryptic and cool in that regard, very durable. I mean, the thing was indestructible, and then it had a ton of color. I mean, like it's a win-win. So you know, uh, I think. My philosophy for fish and corals, but also, but you know, really the fish is. Um, there was a quote by Takashi Yamano in one of his first books, and I'm butchering it, but it, it, he was saying that something to the effect of any fish in the peak of health is perfect. Yeah. And I really feel that way about so many fish. You know, there's certain certain species like that's just never going to do it for me. But on, on the flip side, just about any of these fish, you get it conditioned, you get it, you know, fed properly, you know, make sure it's not getting bullied. And there's something about all animals, all living things where it glows, you know, even like like humans, you know, when they're in their early 20s, males and females are just glowing. They're just kind of that uh, that fitness that you that you can see. And then you, know, you and I are kind of past our prime, so that's why we're putting <laughs> this in the podcast. <laughs> why are you depressing me? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, yeah, so I, I really feel that way about a lot of fish. Um, I'm also a big fan of damselfish. Oh, yeah. I know they get really demonized and... But I, I mess mostly with the uh, Chrysiptera yep. and the Pomacentris. Um, and I tried to add them last, you know. Um, but, man, I don't know why people aren't, just don't lose their mind when they see a metallic blue damselfish with yellow fins or yellow trim, either whether it's a stark eye or an azure or Tasmanian. Um, those things are so awesome, man. They really get a bad rap. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I've always liked the Starkey. That was always, I referred to as my poor man's resplendent angel. Um, but, I mean, even in my current tank, I have uh, an Azure Damsel. Um, I had three, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I lost two, I, and I still don't know why. But uh, the, the other one's just holding out, you know, and he... It's kind of fun because he's darting in and out of the corals, very similar to like what I would see in a documentary or something. And like you mm -hmm. said, how cheap is that fish versus how colorful it is, right? And it's easy to keep. Yeah, totally. I uh, I recently got a group of eight small Springer's damselfish. And then I put them in my soft coral tank, which is now really mixed. And they're just like in and out of the branches and they're still really small, you know, so they still have a lot of that blue, but they're in and out of the milk of stylo. They're in and out of the Kenya tree. They're in and out of, um, I got an orange branching Samacora and it's just, they're so freaking cool, man. And I mean, it was like 50 bucks for eight of them. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, uh, tempted. To, I've never kept them to be honest, the, uh, Talbot damsels. Mm -hmm. I wonder mm -hmm you know how they how they look when they're healthy and I, I can't find any good examples of anybody that's kept them i guess long term and posted pictures about it but i always thought those were pretty cool talbots are pretty cool um but really underrated and i know this is one of sanjay's favorite fish is the roland die damsel oh, fish yeah. but unfortunately there's like there's two forms and one of them doesn't have that really white light colored head that this gives them that funky pop and it's like all right they're a little feisty but they don't move far outside of a small territory they don't have the tools to do a lot of damage so um the roland eye damsel fish is one I, last time i ordered some they sent me the the wrong kind with you know they were just mostly gray i'm like what the hell man get this out of my face <laughs> i ended up giving those away um, but yeah, the, the Roland eye damsel fish, um, all right, sorry, the Talbots, that's what you were saying. Yeah. Um, that's another one. Um, it's going to look okay at the store. You get it, you know, locked into your tank. It'll just glow. Yeah. It'll just be nice pinky yellow with some blue markings. Very awesome fish. Um, sorry, another those. group, man, that really has fallen out, I think, is, uh, the Dottie backs. Oh, yeah. Uh, when we were coming up, man, it was all about looking at Red Sea, a Sunrise, a Orchid Dottie Back, and especially the Sailfin. And they're captive bred, but they're just, they're just mass producing them. And instead of like perfecting the quality, they're just increasing the quantity. And man, I don't think anybody listening, almost no one listening, has seen like a perfect. Mananictus splendens, you know, the sailfin dotty back. Oh my lord. When you're diving, man, those things are freaking everywhere. Yeah. Just totally everywhere. Have you kept any uh dotty backs in your I career? I have an orchid dotty back in my tank. That's an always a uh whenever I set up a tank, I've got like a staple list of fish mm. that I just keep, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Hawkfish, um, yep, orchid dotty back, you know, it's purple, it's cool, it's not as cryptic, but it does bounce in around, you know, out of the rocks. Gives you something a little different than, you know, your tangs that are in your face begging for food. Um, I've always wanted to do a, um, uh, a neon dotty back, but I keep getting mm. mixed signals on those. Like some people actually, they do all right in a big reef uh, where they have enough space. And then other people report that they turn into absolute terrors. I don't know. Obviously, the captive bred ones are a lot more docile. Yeah. Um, yeah, the neon, neon and the Arabian, and then the uh, hybrid of the two, I've kept them all, especially the, you know, the Sankey eye Donnie back. Right? These, they're not, they, they really are never going to go after any fish that's not its shape. You know, unless you have like a strawberry pictochromus in a 10 gallon tank, yeah. um, you should totally be able to get away. And the captive bread ones are small, so they just, they'll kind of grow into their pecking order. I feel like a lot of the bad raps that sometimes some of these territorial smaller fish get are because they're viewed as nano fish and you put mm. them in a nano tank and, you know, the That's other fish point. are always in their business, right? So uh, I've always been kind of curious about that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I that That's another fish I would love to keep. Um, is it the Ilongatus or no, Ila... Elon got us. Yeah, you got it. You got yeah, it. those are those are cool, and they, from what I've heard, they're mild mannered. Mm. 
you know, what other fish can you get that is $10 and solid pink and bulletproof? Now I'm talking bicolor, diadema, or strawberry dotty backs. Um, it's funny talking about these. These are like I have lots of surgeon fish. I got enough damselfish, but I don't have nearly enough dotty backs. But now that the fish populations are a little bit more fleshed out, it's like, oh, okay, well, let me look out for these things. But the one that's always been super top of my list is the, the captive bred orchid dotty backs. They do a really good job, but there is some electric quality of the wild ones that mm -hmm. do not reproduce in the captive bred ones. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, because, I, I mean, I remember the wild ones, and uh, a lot of the elong. Uh, sorry, the, a lot of the captive bred ones, I feel like they almost come in a little ratty looking. Um, and the captive bred? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, one is I think they're small when they come in too, mm -hmm. right? Like they're, they're going to sell them when they're, as soon as they're at a sizable sale, they're and off to the And they've been duking it out in, in a vat with a thousand others. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I mean they tend to they tend to grow up and and still look good, but I, I would I would imagine sort of like again you're, you're you brought up freshwater fish. There's definitely um, in a lot of the freshwater species you can tell the difference between a wild version and like one that's been captive bred many generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's still that demand for a little bit of the wild stock, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's I would say the dotty back kind of a good example of that difference. But is it worth it to go and collect a buttload of them in the wild? No. I mean, like, a captive bred orchid dotty back is beautiful, you know? Yeah, but uh, for me, I guess, I guess you know, I bonded with the appearance of a wild one. But in general, like, I, I think you, you made a really excellent point of, like, when they're freshly captive bred, they've been duking it out, they're small, they're not mature, and I think what, what I'd like to get across with a lot of these fish is, Give them a chance. Yeah. <laughs> Give them a chance. Um, any other fish that come to mind before we uh, turn mm. a page to a different broad uh, group? I'm not a super huge ras guy. I'm always going to stick with like six line, four line, mystery ras, a couple odds and ends. And so I'm just, I'm not the guy to talk to about rasses. And everyone loves angelfish, so I don't think they need any more airtime. Yeah, I, I actually love wrasses, but I am not willing to put a lid or a mm. canopy on my tank. So I've gotten away with, you know, a mystery wrasse uh, at one point in my life. Um, and I may try one of those again with this new tank with the, the slightly larger rim. But, you know, I'm not going to get into the fairy or flasher wrasses just because um, I'll always have an open top tank. And I need to get into some, some flashers because I have... I've never personally kept them. And wrasses are a fish I've very much enjoyed seeing in other people's tanks. But man, even like the cheapest Macoskari flasher wrasse, you see them actually flashing like their namesake. Oh, yeah. oh my lord. It's it's a sight to behold. And I've never personally kept them. So right now on this podcast, I'm committing to getting a small <laughs> group of flasher asses. Um, let's see. I do have a pair of lineatus rasses. I, no, sorry, oh, not a nice. pair. I got two females so that one could grow into a male and I could just have them longer. Um, I always loved me some flame rasses. But again, these are not underrated fish. They're, yeah. I mean, everybody loves uh, all kinds of flasher asses. But one that's actually maybe not celebrated enough is the majority of the exquisite fairy rasses um, that are coming in mostly from Africa because um, they're really cheap and really common from there. Oh, man, I've had one. for I got it for like 50 bucks, and it's just all the patterns and all the colors that you see in the pictures. And as he's gotten older and more mature, um, he's just, he's re yeah, he's really starting to turn on. I would say the exquisites, like the wrasses that used to be unavailable but now are ubiquitous, you know, yeah. and I feel like that's the, that is a trend for a almost all of, of aquarium livestock isn't it yeah like you were saying yellows versus gems yeah it's uh, if it's hard to get then you know you want it more but um we're, we're i mean we're we're talking about the the, the creatures that have inherent value <laughs> yeah <laughs> not not whatever is the the it fish moment um i, I would say 
Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other underrated fish. I mean, an easy one would be uh, Royal Grandma's, but... Oh, um, God. I, why do I not have that on my list? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm almost clipped us right now. <laughs> Dude, I am, yeah, I'm just, I'm just waiting for the right time for my, my quarantine system to just be you know, vacated. Yeah. And I'm going to get 20 Royal Grandma's. I mean, I would get a bunch of Dijon's too, but uh, Black Caps also. But, yeah, Royal Grandma, there's something about that fish. I guess they're probably like 15 or 20 bucks now, but growing up, they're like 8 to 10 to 12. And just, I want them small. I want to grow them out. I mean, I super appreciate the um, the one from the Cayman Islands that are never collected for the hobby. They're like a third purple and two-thirds yellow. You nailed it on my head with Royal Grandmas. Mm-hmm. 